All right, we'll go ahead and start our post-race availability for today's Sylvania 300. We are now joined by race winner Matt Kinseth and crew chief Jason Radcliffe. Matt, you won today at New Hampshire. You are guaranteed a spot now in the contender round. Talk a little bit about advancing on in the chase. Yeah, I mean, we started off last week with a, with a pretty decent week and, um, you know, felt good about our run today, you know, and our, our chances to advance. But really um, just pretty darn excited to win the race, you know. So these are all big races. They're hard to win. Uh, you ever get in a position to win one, you want to do everything in your power to be able to win it no matter what the consequences are for the points. So i got to be honest, I, I haven't even really thought about the points or, or chase or anything. Just uh, going to really enjoy this win and look forward to going to Dover next week. Um, I love going there, and hopefully we'll have a, have a good car there where we can be up front and be in the mix again. All right, Jason, this is, as Matt alluded to, this is the fifth victory this year for this team. Talk about the team's performance today and the win. Well, it was, um, you know, just a great execution today matt matt did a great job of methodically you know moving his move, moving forward and uh giving us good feedback on the car the guys did a great job on pit road of you know at least maintaining our spots every time we came down and this is a tough place to call a race um because track position you know you need you, you got to get it and then when you get it you know you need to keep it uh, and the cautions are so hard to predict um when they're going to come and uh you know a couple guys were on one strategy and they were going to be hard to beat. I mean, there was a couple cars there today that were really, really strong, and we needed to do something different. So it worked our way, and everyone, uh, you know, like I said, executed perfectly. And uh, there at the end, the car was at its best, uh, and Matt was able to you know, put the pressure on the four and bring home the victory. All right, we are also joined by our race-winning car owner, Joe Gibbs. Uh, Joe, you now have two teams. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> nobody, else in here. Here. nobody else in here is here. <laughs> Two teams now advancing to the contender round. Talk about the win today. And, uh, no, I, I just really, really proud. Uh, as I've said before, I wished everybody back home could be a part of this. Uh, we got all of our people back there that have worked so hard. And uh, JD and the whole crew, the front office, and then everybody back there works on the cars. I know the guys here really appreciate them because it's been really what's – got us back where we can compete and be up front for wins I think is a lot of hard work and it really started back in 14 when we were having so much um, so much of a problem a thrill for us to be here we all know that there's a lot of excitement because you're going in a little three race playoffs and all it takes is one mistake Kyle today felt awful for him cut a tire down and it shows you how things can turn very quickly. So it's a thrill for us to have two cars in, and uh, we just need to focus this next week on Carl and Kyle. And um, But I really appreciate the fans here. Uh, we have a lot of sponsors, a lot of hospitalities here, because so many of our corporations, this is a big part of the country for them. I appreciate that, and we love coming here. And uh, it was a great day for us, and Lord's bless us with a great group of guys. All right, and with that, we'll go ahead and open it up to questions. Please state your name and affiliation. We'll start up front and then go back to Bob. Uh, Terrell Covey, I'm with the Portsmouth Herald. Um, this kind of goes out to any of you. Um, but when the, the team cars have been really good and really dominant a lot of tracks lately, uh, and then today you kind of made the right calls and you, and you did different things to win, if you're winning in all these different ways, um, what does it say about match chances, but really the entire Gibbs uh, operation. Well, it's, <clears throat> you know, it's like any sport when, uh, when things are going well, uh, it provides a lot of opportunity. So, you know, when you have fast race cars and, uh, you know, I've been asked a number of times this year, what, what's different this year? And the answer is everything's different. I mean, every department has been working really hard. The race cars are fast. The engine program is phenomenal. Uh, the pit crews are, it's just all of it. And when you have that, uh, you open a lot of doors for a lot of opportunity. Um, and I think that's why you're seeing success in a lot of different ways. Um, so, you know, hats off to everyone at JGR. We just, you know, we have eight more races. We got to keep doing what we've been doing. There's some strong contenders out there, very competitive. Um, but uh, yeah, it's been a great season so far. And uh, hats off to everyone at JGR. All right, we'll go to Bob. Uh, 
Bob Pockers, ESPN. Uh, Coach, can you just kind of, are you more excited for Matt or more worried about Kyle? <laughs> I, think, uh, I think in sports it's kind of crazy. The, it's the person where we're having the most trouble. It seems like that's where you pull the hardest. Matt, he's in. So <laughs> you got. Hey, he's out. <laughs> we go. We go to Kyle. That, it's not really that way because, as everybody knows, Dollar General, uh, our sponsors, such a huge deal for them. It's a thrill. We call everybody there. Um, it's Toyota, our partner, uh, that's worked so hard with us. But I do thank you. You know, it's hard to leave the racetrack when you know you had one car that just had a real tough time today. And uh, we care so much about those guys, too. They've been with us for a long time. They're one of the longest sponsors Mars is in our sport. So we'll just focus on that and try and do everything we can to try and get Carl and Kyle in next week. Um, but this is a thrill for us today. You know, get that many victories, and particularly in this sport, is so tough. And uh, it's just great to see Matt today. I thought it was, you know, it was a great race on he and Jason's part because they kind of sat around there fifth, sixth, somewhere in there, kept working their way forward and kept getting the car better and better. And at the end, I think it was real good. So, um, hey, it's great to be a part of something like this. All right. I believe we have a question upstairs in the press box. This is Michael Vega from the Boston Globe for uh, both Matt and Jason. Uh, can, can you just uh, describe the, uh, the end of race dynamics there when, you know, Matt looks like you were well inside the window with tires and fuel uh, and, and Kevin Harvick was not, it seemed like. Uh, did you feel like, you know, they were gambling at that point and Jason, were, was there any talk about, you know, them running out of fuel and, and, and your, you know, relative to your situation, especially when you're running third behind Denny and then, you know, you got in front of him? I'll start, I guess. Um, yeah, Jason did a really good job of keeping me informed. We were obviously fine on tires and fuel. Uh, we were pretty loose on a short run, and I was pleasantly surprised when we came out of the pits. We were only ninth or 11th or whatever. Uh, there was less cars staying out there than I thought. And we had a long enough run where the, the new tires were actually a big advantage, um, which surprised me because earlier in the race, you know, we had uh, – four and I think the two and the four had two tires and I couldn't catch them and pass them so anyway we we're able to make some ground and uh, once we got up there was about 40 to go and the new was off the tires and I was behind Denny and Jason started telling me I thought the four was gonna be short on fuel and then we raced for a little bit more and, and I was just kinda waiting so I didn't kill the right front and get too tight at the end of the run and then uh, you know Denny was starting to lose the four a little bit so Jason was pretty adamant that I needed to if Denny couldn't catch him I needed to get around Denny and start pressuring him to make sure he burned more fuel so uh, from there on, I pretty much ran as hard as I could every lap and just uh, did everything I could to wrestle the spot away from Denny and then just tried as hard as I could to run the four down. I, I couldn't, uh, about four or five ago, I didn't think I was going to quite get to him and get by him. And getting, getting to him and getting by him was going to be two different things too. Uh, but I didn't think I was going to quite get there. And, uh, and uh, honestly, Jason told me he was going to be close and he was probably going to run out, but I didn't, uh, I didn't 100% believe him. So I was a little surprised when I saw him pull down with a couple to go. All right, we'll go back to Bob. I think he had one for Jason, too. I can't Thank remember you, what he asked. Yeah, I, well, I think it was, um, I mean, you never know uh, what another competitor's situation is, but, you know, we, we knew that possibly he couldn't make it based on uh, our count, and the guys, you know, did a good job of calculating that and telling me that, hey, he's, he's probably going to be, you know, one or two short, but he can save that, you know, in a 60-lap run. Um, so then at that point, you know, I felt like our, uh, our car was at its best and Matt, you know, had what he needed to go up there and pressure him. Uh, but he was sitting in a good spot. I mean, if, uh, when, when Denny and Matt were racing each other, I'm sure he was loving that. And, uh, so we needed to go up there and race him hard and, um, and, you know, we did just that. I didn't think he was going to run out that soon. I thought it would be closer than that, but, uh, just, you know, it goes to show you how well, uh, Matt did of, of not letting him save and, uh, and making him burn more fuel than he had to. Bob, uh, Bob Pockers, ESPN. Uh, Matt, do you take any responsibility for Kevin running out of gas? I mean, do you feel like you pressured him enough that he had to push hard enough not to say? Do I take responsibility for him running out of gas? No. <laughs> <laughs> That is absolutely not. So I was out there trying to win the race and try to catch him and pass him, so I, I don't know what his situation is. We just... Uh, you know, I, I I got bottled up with Denny, and I couldn't get by him. And we were racing, 
you know, our guts out. And, you know, Kevin was on older tires, so the 40 would go. I'm thinking, well, you know, our tires are so much better, we should be able to get him at the end of the run anyway. And, honestly, he just kept turning, and he was so fast. Um, even with our tire advantage, you know, I, I couldn't really get there. So, obviously, I ran as hard as I could to get as close as I could to him because I wanted to beat him. And, um, you know, the faster he has to go, obviously, burn more gas. But I didn't really know his situation other than Jason told me he might be a little bit short, so we need to get up there and, uh, you know, try to run as hard as we could. Any final questions? All right, congratulations on the win today. Okay. I almost thought, like, you want to be punished or something, Bob. <laughs> hey, Bob.